Hey guys, what's going on? It's Cynical and welcome back to another episode of Sea Salt Cinepates. Today, for you guys, we have some spicy topics to talk about. So without further ado, let's just jump straight into it. So first off for today, uh, we have a little bit of news when looking towards the possible inclusion of Mary Poppins. Yes, out of all Disney characters, Mary Poppins to potentially be in Kingdom Hearts 3. This is coming out of a recent IGN Brazil interview with Tetsuya Nomura, and this is the news right here. Tetsuya Nomura said, Mary Poppins has always been in our conversations about concepts and ideas, but we've always wondered how we can use that film in the franchise. There's a possibility as long as there's a good idea for that. So from the seams of it, the idea of including Mary Poppins into Kingdom Hearts 3, or potentially even a previous Kingdom Hearts title, has actually been in the talk for quite some time. Now personally, I would have never expected the Square Enix team to be on board with the idea of wanting to include Mary Poppins into Kingdom Hearts, mainly because when you look at the Disney characters that are included into the game, or more so the Disney worlds that are in the game, these Disney worlds are usually always based around the animated Disney films. We have obviously had instances where we do have worlds based off of live action Disney films, for an example Pirates of the Caribbean or of course Tron Legacy, but when we look at those, they have a serious plot that's in some shape or form can definitely be put into the Kingdom Hearts story, but when we look at the worlds that are included into the Kingdom Hearts universe, generally the plots of those worlds fit really well with Kingdom Hearts. Now when we look at Mary Poppins, it's a little bit different. Uh, figuring out exactly a good way of including Mary Poppins into the Kingdom Hearts universe, I would have to say, is a bit of a challenge. Now, I wouldn't say that a Mary Poppins world is going to be something we can probably expect, but more so I'd say that if Mary Poppins is actually going to be in Kingdom Hearts 3, I would say she'll likely play a role similar to Remy's role in KH3, where she just simply appears as a little cameo appearance, say in an original world, I would say likely something like Twilight Town or maybe Hollow Bastion, Radiant Garden. Because honestly, thinking of like a Mary Poppins world, although I think that Tetsuya Nomura and his team certainly has the potential to actually turn it into something that is entertaining and quite enjoyable to go through, I just really can't imagine a Mary Poppins world. So I'm also leaning towards the idea of just having Mary Poppins simply in something like Twilight Late town. I think it would be cool if there was some kind of quest chain attached to her, or maybe some kind of mini game. As we know, Mary Poppins is a sort of magical nanny, so in a sense, it would actually be kind of cool if she was like looking after some children in a house in, say, Twilight Town, and we actually have to go out into the worlds and find missing toys for the children that, say, Mary Poppins has ordered us, the player, to go out and seek. Upon returning these items, we could receive things like little special rewards, similar to the way the 101 Dalmatians minigame works in Kingdom Hearts 1, but that's just a real faint little idea. I think it's interesting that Tetsuya Nomura alongside his team have wanted Mary Poppins in the game for quite some time now, and also if Mary Poppins does get included, uh, I would actually really like to see the painting scene from the film, which is definitely one of the coolest scenes out of the entire film itself, uh, put into Kingdom Hearts if she does actually get put into the game. Uh, like I said, I don't really want a Mary Poppins world, but if Square Enix and Tetsuya Nomura can actually do something with the painting scene in the game itself, I think that would be really, really cool. Next up, Tetsuya Nomura made an interesting comment within the exact same interview, mentioning that his favorite world in the game has actually yet to be revealed. This is what was stated. Speaking of the worlds, Nomura laughed when I asked which was his favorite world in the franchise. In addition to stating that his favorite world has not yet been revealed, he also confirmed that there will be some original worlds in Kingdom Hearts 3. So Tetsuya Nomura's personal favorite world has yet to be revealed for the game? That just gets me excited. I don't know why, that that just, just that just gets me excited. Like, if we take a minute to sit down and look at all of the current worlds we have for Kingdom Hearts 3 and just take in the beauty, the design, the succulentness of the open world sort of templates they're going for, filled with more content, you have to sit back and realize, man, Square Enix are doing an absolutely incredible job of bringing these worlds to life. But we are yet to see Nomura's personal favorite? That just gets me super excited, and it must be something really special. Now, this comment actually got me thinking about some news that came out back in 2015. I'm going to bring it up right here, and translations are a little bit all over the place. There was an interview with Tetsuya Nomura back in 2015 with a Korean website, and they actually asked what Tetsuya Nomura's favorite worlds are 
star from the Kingdom Hearts franchise so far. In response, he actually mentioned that both Halloween Town and Pride Lands are his personal favorites. However, though, in the same breath, he mentioned that because Halloween Town has been done so many times in the Kingdom Hearts series before, it's likely that we probably won't see it appear in Kingdom Hearts 3. And for the most part, that's sad because it is my personal favorite world, but ultimately it does make sense. I think at this point, we have all the story we currently need for the Halloween Town worlds. And really, uh, they've pretty much covered everything from the film itself. I don't exactly know where Square Enix could go forward from with continuing the Halloween Town world. Although they could come up with an original plot, I think they're just wanting to focus more so on newer base worlds this time around. That being said though, we also know that Pride Lands is also one of Tetsuya Nomura's favorite worlds as well. And the Lion King has only appeared once throughout the entirety of the Kingdom Hearts franchise, appearing once as Pride Lands in Kingdom Hearts 2. So this is kind of making me think, is he potentially talking about the Lion King? Just because in the past he has mentioned that the Lion King is one of his personal favorites, there is room for the Lion King to return in Kingdom Hearts 3, with of course continuing the world based off of the story of the Lion King 2, Simba's Pride. Now I understand understand that The Lion King 2 wasn't really all that well received, especially when you compare it to the very first Lion King, but that being said, I feel as if Square Enix and Tetsuya Nomura really do a great job of mixing in the plot of that corresponding Disney world with obvious Kingdom Hearts themes, and I feel like they could do the same with the plots of The Lion King 2. I feel as if Nomura could really make it into something special, and just imagine a Pride Lands world now running on the Unreal Engine 4, boys. I mean, come on! Can you imagine the fur physics? on Sora, I mean, get that. Can you imagine the fed physics on Seagull Donald? But I think a Pride Lands world would be absolutely amazing in Kingdom Hearts 3, but like I said, you know, Square Enix are definitely wanting to focus more so on newer based Disney properties this time around, rather than bringing back worlds that have previously appeared, but of course Lion King hasn't really appeared all that much, so I think it kind of gets a little bit of a pass. However, this could be something entirely different, this could be a brand new Disney property that has never come to Kingdom Hearts before, and is something that Tetsuya Nomura has actually wanted in the franchise for a very long time. With them also mentioning that there will be some original worlds in Kingdom Hearts 3 within the same breath as this info, it also makes me think that he might be referring to the very final stage, as it seems that from previous interviews, when Tetsuya Nomura and Square Enix are talking about this final stage, it seems like they're pretty impressed and excited for it. And last up for today, I thought I would quickly talk about a really, really exciting and just jaw-dropping PlayStation announcement that came out last night. PlayStation announced uh, a brand new limited edition PS4 Pro console, and it's to celebrate 5 million total sales towards the PlayStation brand. I saw quite a few people like confused towards this, where Sony was like advertising this as the 500 millionth uh, console. People were like, well wait, hold on, Sony haven't sold 500 million PS4s, that's absurd. More so, they're referring to 500 million total sales towards the PlayStation brand. But what we have right here is goddamn, I gotta say, like, the Kingdom Hearts 3 console is beautiful, it's gorgeous, and my god do I want it. But this sucker right here, man, I mean, I don't think we've ever had a translucent PlayStation console, and if we have, I feel as if it would have been exclusive to that of Japan, so this right here is a first. It is a translucent deep blue console, looks absolutely goddamn beautiful. On the front of the console we have this like little slit that actually tells you uh, what number your console is out of a total of 50,000. So this console is extremely limited, only 50,000 of these are going to be available. It is going on sale August 24th, so if this is something that you guys want to dip your fingers into, then I suggest you be prepared for August 24th because these things are just going to sell out like hotcakes. With the console though, you do get a bluish kind of PlayStation camera, which is super cool. You also get the matching controller, which again is translucent deep blue, just looks, oh my god, so good. You also get a blue microphone, and on top of that you get a vertical stand, which is really nice. I don't think there's many consoles out there that actually come with a vertical stand. Uh, along with the camera as well, so that's some nice little additions. It should also be noted that this is a PlayStation 4 Pro, so you're getting all of the extra Pro enhancements. And on top of that, this is also a 2TB, not a 1TB, but a 2TB system, so more space for more games. But uh, guys, that is all for today's episode of Sea Salt Snippets in the comment section down below. Let me know your thoughts and opinions towards today's news. And until next time, guys, I'll catch you later. Peace.